Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, so this next little mini lesson is going to be covering buffers. So we defined buffers in the acids mini lesson uh, just a bit ago in that buffers are things, molecules, processes um, that have the ability to maintain a stable pH even with the addition of um, hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. So they are really important in helping us maintain our blood pH. Remember, we have a very narrow range of 7.35 to 7.45. And this is blood pH. So this is the pH of your blood plasma. So it's a little bit on the alkaline side. It's above 7, so we know it's a little bit basic. Um, and that's okay because we are acidic acid-creating organisms. So we need to have that little bit of higher buffer uh, the alkaline side of our blood to help to combat those acids that are being produced by our normal metabolic processes. And most of the time, this, this buffer is caused by all of those bicarbon ions that come into the blood via carbon dioxide transport. So if you go back to our respiratory system, we remember CO2 going from the tissues into the blood, goes into the red blood cells, dissociates into hydrogen ion and bicarb, and the bicarb gets chloride shifted out into the plasma. And that's where this al slightly alkaline number comes from, is that transport of CO2 from the tissues to the lungs as this form of bicarbonate ion. So this chart, this kind of flow chart, breaks down our different buffer systems that we have in the different compartments. So we have some that are just only found in the ICF inside of our cells, and we have some that are only found in the ECF outside of our cells, and then we have some that kind of straddle both compartments. So for the first one um, in the ICF, we'll talk about the phosphate buffer system first. So this is a chemical buffer. I think I have it written here. We have this thing called H2PO4. Um, which is dihydrogen phosphate. So the H2 is a dihydrogen and the PO4 is a phosphate group. It's one of those functional groups from general chem or organic chemistry or however you took it. And this is in a reversible reaction to H plus plus HPO4 two minus. Okay, so because it is has the ability to go in both directions. Let's say you are in a, an acidic environment. So if you have high hydrogen ion concentrations, what you have is you will have this population of the HPO4, the monohydrogen phosphate, will be able to tie up any excess hydrogens and produce this H2PO4. And so the, the way that it serves as a buffer is it has the ability that HPO4 can tie up hydrogen to become the H2PO4. That would be what would happen in an acidic environment. If we are in a basic environment, so we have not enough hydrogen ions, we don't have enough, we need to make more, we can take the H2PO4 and split that apart and to release the hydrogen ions into solution to try to bring the pH back down to normal. So this equation, um, can happen in both directions, and it's found in the ICF. So it's the main buffer inside of cells to maintain the pH of the cytoplasm. The protein buffers, so these protein buffers can be in both inside of cells and outside of cells. Wherever you find a protein, you have the ability to do a protein buffer. The hemoglobin buffer is only found inside red blood cells. So we saw that a little bit when our CO2 went into carbonic acid, which dissociated, the bicarb got kicked out into the plasma, but the hydrogen ions got buffered by the high, uh, hemoglobin. And this is what it's talking about, is the amino acids in the hemoglobin have the ability to buffer um, hydrogen ions. And then all amino acids, all proteins, and then within the plasma, we have the plasma protein. So that's why protein buffers can be in both inside of the cell, in an ICF compartment, or outside of the cell, in the blood plasma or in the ECF compartment. So I have a specific slide for the protein buffer, and then I have another slide for the carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system. We'll see that again. So let's take a look at the specifics of how an amino acid can be a buffer. So if you remember, an amino acid is kind of a small organic molecule. It's got a, car a carboxylic acid on one side, and it's got an amine group on the other side. 
So in a neutral pH, um, we can have the amine hook on to, it can be like an NH3 plus. It's got an extra hydrogen ion that can be bound to it. And our COO, uh, the hydrogen ion is lost on that. So let's say if the pH decreases, so if we're going to an acidic, right, so this is going to be an acidic condition, as a buffer, our job would be to pull up and tie up excess hydrogen ions so they're not freely floating and they won't be counted in that concentration. So in that case, these excess hydrogen ions can be buffered by parts of the R group, which would be the, the variations between each amino acid, and that O minus, the COO part of the carboxylic acid, can pick up its hydrogen ion. So in this case, we are pulling hydrogen ions out of solution, sticking them onto these amino acids, and then they will be able to buffer the excess hydrogen. And so this is going to be true for any amino acid and any protein that can serve as this buffer. If we go to an alkaline or basic environment, that means we have too few hydrogen ions. Well, that hydrogen that's hooked to the nitrogen can pop off. So at that amine side of the amino acid, it can release that excess hydrogen ion to try to bring the pH back down to normal. If we're on a basic side, the pH is a little bit too high. So these amino acids can release that excess hydrogen to bring things back down to normal pH. So that's the mechanism of how the protein buffer system works, whether it's the hemoglobin, because it's made of amino acids, your albumins or your other plasma proteins, because they're made of amino acids, any protein made of amino acids has the ability to serve as a buffer. So it's kind of this built-in mechanism for a really large amount of molecules that are found inside and outside of our cells. And then lastly, our wonderful carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system. Um, are you guys tired of this yet? Hopefully not, because it's so cool. We saw it so many times, and it just is it just it's going to keep coming back to our understanding of um, how our body maintains physio physiology and uh, physiological homeostasis. So here is our normal. So on the top, it's normal. So we have CO2 coming um, from our tissues, right? And we are at an equilibrium with the CO2 coming out of the lungs. It's coming in. All the blue arrows and the red arrows, everything's going equilibrium. What we're adding to this um, equation is this bicarbonate reserve. So if you remember, sodium is the number one cation found in extracellular fluid. And bicarb was a really big component of our extracellular fluid, um, our ECF, our plasma, and our interstitial fluid. And because they are oppositely charged, they can be associated, sodium bicarbonate. And they themselves are in an equilibrium, right? So we can see arrows going in both ways between the loosely um, or the dissociated sodium and bicarb to the connected sodium bicarbonate. So we have this reserve in our blood. It's basically baking soda um, kind of dissolved throughout our blood. So let's say in a situation we have an increase in hydrogen ions, so fixed or organic acids. Something is coming in ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, a whole bunch of fatty acids are being produced or generated somehow metabolically. So what will happen is we are increasing our hydrogen ion concentration, and that's going to change, right? It's going to change the dynamic of this equilibrium to try to increase. So if we're going to write our teeter-totter, it would be like this. And so the equation is going to drive to the left to try to increase the products in this case, which was the CO2 and water. So our excess bicarb, we can break apart our sodium bicarbonate. Now we have this excess bicarb, which will tie up these hydrogen ions, producing carbonic acid, dissociating into water and carbon dioxide. And how do we get rid of CO2? <sighs> we exhale. So when we are in an acidic condition, our blood pH is going to start going down. Chemoreceptors in our brain, in our um, higher centers, and our and our hypothalamus will recognize that the pH is going down. It will trigger our pons, right, our pneumotoxic and apneustic centers, to increase our respiratory rate to help blow off the CO2 and that's and water, because that's where the hydrogen ions are being converted into water, and that's going to help to buffer an input of these organic and fixed acids. Okay, so this is how the bicarbonate acid um, 
carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system works in that it can go in both directions. I'm just showing you an increase in hydrogen ions because that's probably the most likely. Um, but if it was the other way around, let's say if we were to decrease hydrogen ions for some reason. So let's take these away. If we were to remove hydrogen ions, we could drive the equation this way to try to produce more hydrogen ions. And what do you think our respiratory rate would do? It would slow down. Our brain would be reading that our blood is a little bit alkaline. It would slow our respiratory rate, not exhaling as much CO2, holding on to that CO2 more in our lungs, keeping it in the blood longer, which is going to drive that equation to the right, trying to replace those hydrogen ions that would be lost. So that would be our teeter-totter like this. And so we're driving the equation to the right. So this bicarbonate acid, I keep saying that, carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system can go in both directions. And it really only works with those fixed acids um, and organic acids. There is a limitation to this buffer system. And we saw that in grandpa's case, in that respiratory system case study. You cannot fix a problem, an acid-based problem, with this buffer system if CO2 is the cause of the problem. There's limitations. We are limited by how much um, reserve we have, right? So we, if we are running out of our bicarbonate reserve, we can't use this as a buffer system. If our lungs are not functioning properly, like in grandpa's case, or somebody with emphysema or COPD, that's the cause of the problem. They're producing hydrogen ions because you have too much CO2. You can't rely on this system to fix the problem if it is the cause of the problem. So in that case, the body would have to rely on some of those other buffers, the, the hemoglobin, the protein, the phosphate buffers in the ICF, and mainly rely on the kidneys to get rid of the excess hydrogen ions because your lungs can't do it. So keep that in mind. This is a wonderful built-in system to maintain blood pH, but also because of the nature of it and it needs healthily functioning lungs to work, if your lungs are not functioning properly, it cannot fix the problem. It will be the cause of the problem. All right, so that's our buffers. Um, then the next few uh, videos are going to be about acid-base balance and how we, our body compensates for uh, different imbalances. All right, I'll see you next time.